Hi everyone, my name is Juno. I have a health science background and I'm the author of the book Truth and Empathy, How to Find Your Soulmate. And I'll put a link to the book below. This video is about the romantic compatibility between INFJs and ENFPs. There's quite a bit of information out there and some of it can be confusing in terms of which personality type is best matched with another. I usually advocate that like attract like and although uh, obviously INFJs and ENFPs are both intuitive feelers, there are some hurdles that they might encounter. So I have some notes here uh, because I don't want to miss anything and we'll dive into the, let's say, the positives and the challenges they might be facing if they decide to pursue a romantic relationship. So in the terms of uh, uh, the positive aspects is that obviously they're both intuitive feelers, so they have uh, one of the best energies. Actually, the INFJ has the best energy of all the 16 personality types, but the NFP also, so they emit a loving energy because when you look at their brain type, uh, the ENFP has an alpha brainwave dominance and the INFJ has a theta brain dominance. So in other words, if you were to uh, interact with them, they would have a calming healing effect. Uh, the other point also is that being an intuitive, they're both focused on the abstract and has to do with the future. So these are people who like to explore theories. Um, these are people who are very good in terms of exploring what cannot be seen with the five senses. The other point also is that they're very empathic, so they're right brain dominant, so it's going to be a rather loving type of interaction between the, these two. And also, they are the soulmate type of romantic partner. So they are, like, compared to, let's say, the other personality types, I mean, for example, the sensor perceivers are the playmate, so they like partners who are more fun and they want adventure, whereas uh, let's say if you look at the intuitive feelers, uh, they are looking for a physical, mental, spiritual, emotional connection with their loved ones. So, especially when it comes, obviously, when it comes to their romantic partners, that's what they want. So, it is really sort of uh, the epitome of what people would call a true romantic match. The other aspect is that INFJs and ENFPs will enjoy talking to each other because they are very curious. And when you look at their function stack is that they are obviously right brain dominant, but they also have a well-developed thinking function. So the ENFP has extrovert thinking as their third function, and the INFJ has introvert thinking as their third function. So what you will see is that they can explore not only in terms of psychology, uh, let's say, the arts, but also math and science, because both of them have that aspect that is rather well developed. Although the INFJ is probably uh, more in terms of a balanced brain compared to an EFP, but they can understand each other on that level. The other point also is that they are very affectionate. Uh, so these are people who like to hug, they like to be physically close to their partners, so they won't have any issues in terms of the sort of like be able to be close and be comfortable with that level of being affectionate. Uh, the other point also, they, the type of people who are slow, um, they're not the type to like to rush, so when they start to, to spend time together, they will take their time and feel that the other one is really present and be able to really understand. And I find the ENFPs are not uh, shy in terms of showing their emotions. So these are people are rather bold that way. Uh, other personality tests might be sort of concerned to come across as maybe too transparent, but ENFPs tend to be really comfortable with just being themselves because they really want to be authentic in their relationships. A lot of people describe the INFJ as being reclusive and having issues with being able to express themselves, but actually the INFJ is the most expressive of all the intuitive feelers. So they come across often as extrovert, but in fact they're introvert because they really can be recharged only by being on their own or maybe with one of the other people that they're close to. With the ENFP, they will see that they mesh well in terms of their body language because both of them are rather expressive, so they'll feel that the other person really understands them. 
The other aspect is that the ENFP and the INFJ tend to have high IQs. So they're the type of people who have a lot to explore together and they'll feel that the other person really understands subtleties about different topics. So that's very interesting when it comes to different personality types because when let's say you compare the other two uh, intuitive feelers, the INFP and the ENFJ, it's more difficult for the INFJ to be understood on that level. So the ENFP, because the fact that the, the way their brains are wired, will be able to understand the INFJ better in terms of different topics, especially when we talk about math and science. On the downside is that the INFJ will come across as judgmental to the ENFP. Because if you look at their function stack, is that the INFJ has introverted intuition as its first function. So the introverted intuition function has to do with getting to one answer. So uh, compared to the ENFP, its first function is extroverted intuition. It has to do with continuously looking at different possibilities. So what happens is that when they're interacting, the INFP will be sort of more gentler in terms of when they, they you know, give their opinions, where the INFJ will tend to just say, well, this is how, what things are. And the other aspect is that the INFJ, who has a theta brain dominance, sees uh, things at a deeper level so that the INFJ may come across as cynical about people in the world because how their brains are wired. So the INFJ sees deep into the nature of human beings. And because of that, over time, people may think that they are negative, but in fact, they're just more realistic about who people are. Compared to, let's say, the ENFP, who is more gentle, if you look at the, the, the brain configuration, they have a alpha brain dominance. So they see obviously essence, but not to the depth of the INFJ. So they will come across as more positive than the INFJ. And when it's, they're discussing, I mean, what you'll see is that the INFP may look at the INFJ and think that that person is negative, when in fact, it's more the INFJ being more realistic about people and life in general. The other point that may cause issues between INFJs and ENFPs is that the INFJ is a judger, whereas an ENFP is a perceiver. And judges are the type of people who like organization. They like to complete their tasks. Uh, they are the people who are good at following through, whereas the perceivers, like the ENFPs, are not. So the INFJ might become very sort of frustrated over time because they will have to complete the task for the ENFP. On the other end, the ENFP may feel constrained by the INFJ because they like to do things at the last minute, they like their freedom of movement, and they'll feel like the INFJ wants everything set. So they'll feel that it's too structured and they don't have enough space to be maybe creative and do things at the last minute. The other areas that may cause friction between the INFJs and the ENFP has to do with their finances. What happens is that the INFJ is the type to be cautious, uh, to be financially responsible, to save money for a rainy day, whereas the ENFP is not like that. They like to take risks. They're the type of people who might, you know, let's say invest in a risky business. Um, they're the type of people who think that things will fall into place. And uh, so the INFJ will look at the ENFP as being financially irresponsible. By contrast, the ENFP will look at the INFJ and feel that the INFJ is not open-minded enough and not want to take risk and just, just be more adventurous financially. The other area that may cause issues has to do with their relationship style. The INFJs are the feminine and orderly type, whereas the ENFPs are the feminine and spontaneous type, which has to do with what is, let's say, their driving force when it comes to their relationship. The INFJs want closeness and being connected. So they're the people who will talk to their uh, significant other almost every day. So they want to know everything. They want to feel really connected. When By contrast, although the ENFPs are the soulmate type of romantic partner, they are about authenticity. So although they do enjoy spending time with uh, their significant other, but they don't need that much contact. So what may happen over time is that the INFJ may feel not connected with the ENFP. So they may feel that the relationship is not deep enough 
Um, they might feel that they can't really rely on the ENFP because they're not easily reachable or, or accessible because the ENFP having introverted feeling as its second function has to do with their own morals or their own ethics. So if something doesn't feel true to them, they might decide not to follow through or not call this person because they didn't feel like it. Whereas the INFJ, because they have extrude feelings, their second function is very much about looking at the world from other people's point of view. So they take other people's needs and concerns more into consideration than the NFP. So the INFJ may look at the NFP as being self-absorbed and selfish. So to summarize, the INFJs and the ENFPs may have a number of areas where they will get along, but they may face challenges if they decide to pursue a long-term romantic relationship. For example, they are both intuitive feelers, so they are right brain dominant, they're very interested in the abstract world, uh, they are affectionate, these are people who also may have a number of topics that they can discuss, whether it has to do with psychology, uh, spirituality, math, science, so they tend both to have high IQs, so they will understand each other on that level. Uh, these are people also who uh, are physically affectionate. Um, these are people also who want to have a soulmate type of connection. Uh, however, they will face most likely challenges because one is a judger and the other one is a perceiver. So the judger wants structure, predictability, they want security more than the perceiver uh, as being an ENFP. The other, the other point that may cause issues has to do with the fact that INFJs has extroverted feeling as second function and the ENFP has introvert feeling as its second function, which means that one is more concerned about feeling connected with others, whereas the ENFP has to do with being authentic. So when they have to make decisions and there's ambiguity, one may feel like the other is not really understanding their point of view. So the INFJ is concerned about having harmony and making sure that the needs of others and theirs is taken care of, whereas the INFP is most likely uh, to disregard how their behavior will impact others because they're more concerned about being authentic. So uh, let me know if you agree or disagree with this compatibility analysis by commenting below. If you learned something, if you enjoyed this video, please click on the like button, subscribe to my channel, and we will talk soon.